fusion power explained. The fundamental currency of our universe is energy. It lights our homes, grows our food, powers our computers. We can get it lots of ways, <sighs> burning fossil fuels, man. splitting atoms, or sunlight striking photovoltaics. But there's a downside to everything. Fossil fuels are extremely toxic, nuclear waste is, well, nuclear waste, and there are not enough batteries to store but sunlight for cloudy else. days yet. And yet, the sun seems to have virtually limitless free energy. Is there a way we could build a sun on Earth? Can we bottle a star? Ah, I'm learning so much already. So when, when I was reading last week that China made like a fusion reactor that has three times the heat of the sun, that's what they're talking about. Is that Vermintide? Vermintide is amazing, man. Still Harris Ariel. The sun shines because of nuclear fusion. In a nutshell, fusion is a thermonuclear process, meaning that the ingredients have to be incredibly hot, so hot that the atoms are stripped of their electrons, making a plasma where nuclei and electrons bounce around freely. Understood. Since Thank nuclei you. are all positively charged, they repel each other. In order Listen, expat man, we know that the sun doesn't have infinite light, right? But for the kind of years we're trying to get some energy, it probably will be around. To overcome this repulsion, the particles well, have to be going us. very, very fast. In this context, very fast means very hot. Millions of degrees. Stars cheat to reach these temperatures. They are so massive that the pressure in their cores generates the heat to squeeze the nuclei together until they merge and fuse, creating heavier nuclei and releasing energy in the process. It is this energy release that scientists hope to harness in a new generation of power plants, oh, the fusion reactor. On Earth, it's not feasible to use this brute force method to create fusion, so if we wanted to build a reactor that generates energy from fusion, we have to get clever. Did Son Goku and Piccolo ever fuse? No, 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 no. Did, 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 did Piccolo ever fuse with anyone? I feel like he did. He didn't, right? If you send me a picture of that. Piccolo never... With Nail? Yeah, he fused with the god, to, but he looked like himself after that. Yeah, but he looked like himself after that, because they were Namekian. To date, scientists have invented two ways of making plasmas hot enough to fuse. The first type of reactor uses a magnetic field to squeeze a plasma in a donut-shaped chamber where the reactions take place. These magnetic confinement reactors, such as the ITER reactor in France, use superconducting electromagnets cooled with liquid helium to within a few degrees of absolute zero, meaning they host some of the biggest temperature gradients in the known universe. The second type... You guys are always so clever. Can you tell me why minus 273 degrees uh, is the lowest temperature possible in the universe? Here is a link for a video universe? discussing if we need nuclear power to stop climate change if you want oh, to react to it. Every time I react to shit, you want me to watch more. Thank you for the five. Maybe later. Uh, why, why can't you... Why is zero Kelvin zero Kelvin? Can you explain that in one sentence? What happens if I go to minus 274? What, why is that not possible? Because the atoms stop moving. Ah, okay. That's... There's no more movement. Ah, okay. Got it. Thank you. That was an easy answer. Type called the inertial confinement anymore. uses pulses from superpowered lasers to heat the surface of a pellet of fuel, imploding it. Wouldn't that mean you can save a human, though? If I want to freeze a human, if I freeze a human at minus 273 degrees, the, all the atoms of that human will stop moving. So you can, like, time travel with freezing. The cells will die, but isn't everything stopping? Like the atoms? The unfreeze then fucks your cells though. Okay. Briefly making the fuel hot and dense enough to fuse. In fact, one of the most powerful lasers in the world is used for fusion experiments at the National the Ignition Water Facility in the US. These experiments and others like them around the world are today just experiments. Scientists are still developing the technology. This would actually and although us, right? they can achieve fusion, right now it costs more energy to do the experiments than they produce in fusion. Hmm. 
The technology has a long way to go before it's commercially viable. And maybe it never will be. It that's might just be impossible. And that's the point, Chad. When we talked about energy before, you guys were like, fusion will save us, fusion... Uh, it's not even clear if it's going to happen, right? And we're just going to hope? And what if it doesn't happen? You know? That's something I kind of miss with you guys. So fusion will save us. To you make a that? viable fusion reactor on Earth. But if it gets there, it would be so efficient that a single glass of seawater could be used to produce as much energy as burning a barrel of oil with no waste to speak of. Jesus. This is because the fusion reactors would use hydrogen or helium as fuel, and seawater is loaded with hydrogen. But not just any hydrogen will do. Specific isotopes with extra neutrons called deuterium. <laughs> deuterium. I remember. When I was a kid, I used to play a browser game called O Game. It was a space game. Back in the day, we had browser games. You kids don't know what that is anymore, man. Because uh, we couldn't afford real games. And deuterium was the. Deuterium and there. tritium are needed Heavy to water. make the right reactions. Deuterium is stable dude, and can be found so in good. abundance in seawater, though tritium. I swear to God. I, I swear on my grandpa's grave, I was once ranked one in Travian. Apparently in English it's Travis, Travian. You guys remember that? I swear to God. I was ranked one in this game. You guys remember this? This was actually fun as hell, dude. Dude, this is, we didn't have video games back then. We had to play browser games, man. I remember we played Romans, me and Tony, and I actually put real life money in so I can finish buildings fast and I was ranked one for a second. But then all the Germans came. Tritium is a bit trickier. It's radioactive, and there may only be 20 kilograms of it in the world, mostly in nuclear warheads, which makes it incredibly expensive. Holy crap, man. So we may need another fusion buddy for deuterium instead of tritium. Helium-3, an isotope of helium, might be a great substitute. Unfortunately, it's also incredibly rare on one. Earth. But All game door was... Oh, let's not go there. Here, the moon might oh, have the answer. So long ago. Over billions of years, the solar wind may have built up huge deposits of helium-3 on the moon. Instead of making helium-3, we can mine it. If we could sift the lunar dust for helium, we'd have enough fuel to power the entire world for thousands of years. When I hear stuff like this, I'm always a bit sad about Elon Musk. Like, stop going to Mars. Take care of this yes. shit, man. One more argument for establishing a moon base, if you weren't convinced already. Okay, maybe you think building a mini sun still sounds kind of dangerous. Yeah. yeah. But they'd actually be much safer than most other types of power plant. A fusion reactor is not like a nuclear plant, which can melt down catastrophically. If the confinement failed, then the plasma would expand and cool, and the reaction would this stop. This actually sounds very good, but... Put simply, happen? it's not a bomb. The release of radioactive fuel like tritium could pose a threat to the environment. Tritium could bond with oxygen, making radioactive water, which could be dangerous as it seeps into the environment. Already, right? Fortunately, there's no more than a few grams of tritium in use at a given time, so a leak would be quickly diluted. So we've just told you that there's nearly unlimited energy to be had at no expense to the environment in something as simple as water. So, what's the catch? Cost. We simply don't know if fusion power will ever be commercially viable. Even if they work, they might be too expensive to ever build. Hmm. The main drawback is that it's unproven technology. It's a $10 billion yeah, 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 gamble, and that money might be better spent on other clean energy that's already proven itself. Maybe we should cut off... I think, right, this is easy to say. In our lifetime, we're still going to see people on the moon, right? Let's be real. I think so. In the next 50 years, we're going to see Crosses. someone or on the moon. Or maybe when the payoff is unlimited clean energy easy, for right? everyone, it might be worth the risk.